Montez came from Washington. His teammate and bookend mate, if you want to call him that, Chase Young, was also traded for a third rounder, which is feels like stealing if you're San Francisco 49ers, who now have Nick Bosa reunited with Ohio State teammate Chase Young. You have Armstead in the middle. You have Hargrave in the middle. You have Drake Jackson outside who started strong and maybe didn't flash as much as they wanted, and that's why they went out and got Chase Young. Uh, but let's not talk about the 49ers. Let's talk about the Commanders. Are they just throwing up their hands and giving up on the season and stockpiling picks? Because now they have a second rounder for Montez. They have the third rounder for Chase Young. Their offensive line is a mess, and, and Sam uh, Howell's running for his life every week. I think it's it's going to be interesting to see, and I don't know the the, 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 the dynamic behind the scene, but was this directed from the ownership? Because if I'm Ron Rivera, if I'm the front office, we have to win games maybe to keep our job or the new ownership may end up blowing it up. The best way to keep our job is to keep sweat and to keep chase. <laughs> if they're no longer there, Toll Hill's okay. Two Hill is okay as edge rush, but they don't have any depth there at the, at the uh, position. So that are going to replace those two guys. So if the owner came down and said, we need to start building for the future, we need the draft picks. I can understand why they did that, even though they're still technically in the hunt. Um, but this was, I don't know if this came from ownership or if this was the decision made between Ron Rivera and the front office to move forward, but they gave away two very good pass rushers. That is the strength of the commander's defense. And now you've taken a strength and made it a weakness, except right. for the two inside guys. Allen and Payne are pretty good players. So with that, does that give you a better chance to win games? I, in my mind, it doesn't. So if I'm trying to fight for my job and the owner came down and says, get rid of these two guys, I want the draft picks for next year because we're going to start rebuilding, what confidence is that saying to Ron Rivera in the front office that you're going to be there next year? Unless they already said, you'll be here next year, we're going to rebuild, go ahead and do this and don't worry about it. I don't know that for a fact. Yeah, don't worry about it. Famous last words. No, you'll be fine. Don't, don't worry yeah, about it. Yeah, yeah, heard that many a time. <laughs> uh, by the way, so Cedar Washington has the 11th pick, the 37th pick, which is the one they just got from Chicago. So it was pick 37, pick 42, 73. And then they have a, a compensatory pick in the third round, which is pick 100. And, I mean, that looks nice to have five picks in the top 100, but you also don't have Chase Young and Montez Sweat, uh, as you noted, two, uh, two of the four best players in that defense. If you're Jonathan uh, Allen, oh, go ahead. Yeah, go unless ahead. they're trying to make a power move to accumulate all those draft picks to depending on where they end up and try to make a run at either Williams or Drake May. Okay. I mean, it's going to take more than those five picks and some later first rounders, but I get I it. Understand. I get it. But what about, let me ask you this and, and then we'll move on. Jonathan Allen had some pretty pointy comments after a recent loss. I don't remember which one. I don't know if you heard him, but he was pretty fired up and not happy with the direction of the way things were going and the losing. And he made that clear, uh, dropping some F-bombs along the way. And I understand the frustration. What is he thinking now? I mean, this is before the trade. Now you get rid of two of your best players. What's he supposed to, what are you supposed to tell this guy? Well, that'll be interesting how Ron Rivera can keep the troops rallied down in that locker room. Uh, because you're giving away two key players, especially on the defensive side of the ball. So what message did that send? What send it like you you indicated and we're indicating, well, hey, we're giving up on a season. I don't know that, but that's what you're assuming on the outside. Uh, but how do you keep that team going uh, when you gave away two uh, critical pieces on the defensive side of the ball and especially critical pieces that can rush the passer?